John Bennett uh, in another series of Parkinsonism educational hangouts with uh, Dr. A.Q. Rana, MD, a neurologist from Toronto and a world-renowned Parkinson's, Parkinsonism educator. Tonight, the doctor is going to be talking about falls in Parkinsonism. So good evening, Dr. Rana. It's all yours. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. Uh, so today we'll discuss uh, falls uh, in Parkinson's disease. Uh, falls uh, are a major issue as Parkinson's disease advances. More than two-thirds of patients will uh, suffer falls each year and uh, about 10 to 15 percent of patients may fall once a week. There are several factors which may contribute to falls such as age of patients, a duration of Parkinson's disease, trouble keeping their balance, uh, drop in blood pressure when they stand up from a sitting or lying down position, a slow reaction time, uh, cognitive issues, and slowness of movements. There could be other uh, non-neurological factors such as poor vision, uh, their decreased mobility, uh, or muscle weakness in arthritis. Also, patients uh, who have Parkinson's, they have slow speed of walking, their stride is short, their base is narrow, they do have trouble turning and fascinations. Uh, these uh, uh, these uh, factors, uh, they, they cause a significant problem to the patients in maintaining their balance when they're walking or when they're standing up from a sitting position and these leads to falls. Uh, Another issue is medications because of uh, these patients being on multiple medications such as antidepressant, sometimes they are uh, taking sleeping medications or antipsychotics. Uh, these medications may, can make these people uh, lethargic and sleepy during the day. Uh, the falls usually do not occur in the beginning of course of Parkinson's disease. They usually occur in moderate stage Parkinson's disease. If falls occur in the beginning of Parkinson's disease, uh, when the symptoms are just starting uh, and patients have any fall, and, and, and these patients have falls without any warning, uh, then we do consider other alternative diagnoses such as atypical Parkinsonism. Uh, falls lead to fractures uh, and uh, cause trouble with independence of patients. Uh, so patients are afraid of going out and uh, uh, walking. So they are socially isolated. Uh, this can lead to depression. And if patients fall and get fractures, they have to be hospitalized. And once you are hospitalized, you get trouble with infections, uh, PE, skin ulcers, and you are prone to so many problems uh, such as deconditioning because you're lying down in hospital. Very good, doctor. I think you answered how are the falls related to Parkinsonism. Um, how can one prevent falls in Parkinsonism and at home? Uh, there are two main uh, issues. One is uh, making your home safe and other is uh, uh, keep uh, your own balance, improving your own balance. Uh, so with respect to keeping your uh, home safe, it is best advised that you should get a home safety assessment. Uh, in addition, uh, your home should be uh, lightened enough, especially at night time, that uh, you have no trouble walking uh, inside the house. Uh, you should install uh, night lights. Uh, your bathroom should be uh, lit enough uh, and also if there are any loose rugs in the house they should be removed and wall-to-wall -wall carpet uh, is actually better than small rugs because uh, people can trip over them. Also if uh, someone has a hardwood floor so they should not uh, uh, wax them because it makes them more slippery. Loose objects should be removed if someone has pets such as cats or dogs, so they should be especially cautious because people can trip over them. Also, uh, the walkway and the steps should be kept in a good condition and the furniture in the house should be strong enough to support the weight of a person and uh, uh, these people should avoid any furniture with gloss inside the house. The furniture should not be moved. It should be kept at known places so that a person is familiar with their surrounding 
And also, uh, if someone is living with uh, a patient with Parkinson's disease, it does help. Installing handrails in the hallways uh, and staircase, also in the bathroom is helpful. Having a phone on each level, the wireless phone is even better. Uh, so, and these patients should not lock the washroom door from, from inside. They should also have the non-slip bathtubs and bath benches. Showering and dressing should be done when they are sitting and they should use the non-skid adhesive strips which are very effective in preventing the falls. As I said before, the home safety assessment is crucial in these patients. They can advise them uh, with their expertise and give them further tips that how they can make their home safe. With respect to uh, a person's own balance, uh, the first thing they should be careful is about the shoes. Uh, the shoes uh, should have a good grip, they should be comfortable, uh, and leather sole shoes uh, are always good. If they're going out, they should always use ice scrapes, and also they should avoid doing multitasking because when they're doing multitasking, they may not be able to hold their balance and their own reflexes uh, may be at risk. Uh, so uh, they are at a risk of uh, falling uh, and, and get injured in these cases if they are doing multiple tasks at the same time. The patient should try to keep one hand free. They should avoid carrying uh, items in both hands at the same time and they should also keep their feet at a good distance so that they are comfortable because narrow ways uh, also leads to difficulty maintaining balance. Uh, the feet should be at a shoulder length apart uh, and uh, outdoor steps should be kept clean, uh, free of ice, especially if someone is living in Canada or uh, in northern U.S. In addition, patients should take special precautions after heavy meals and hot showers, after having bowel movement or urinating, because these are timings when they are especially at a risk of fall. Uh, keeping a good bone health, uh, taking vitamin D, calcium uh, is also good uh, because it prevents osteoporosis. Uh, and uh, God forbid, if they forget, if they fall, then. Uh, their uh, bone health is good and they are at a less of risk of a fracture. Also, exercise keeps our muscles healthy and bones strong uh, because uh, the bone formation is a constant process. The bone is being formed and the bone is being resorbed. So, uh, most of these patients, uh, uh, because they are stationary, they are sitting all day, so their, their process of bone resorption is more active than bone formation because our daily activity and mobility helps with bone formation. So when these patients are immobile, their uh, bone resorption is more. As a result, the bones get uh, weak, and if they fall, they have higher risk uh, of fractures because of osteoporosis. Also, keeping their weight in control because obesity uh, is a major issue in North America and uh, the patients are less mobile, they can't keep their balance and also obesity leads to other factors such as diabetes which can cause neuropathy which is another risk uh, factor uh, for balance issues. So keeping a good height and weight ratio is always good. It also helps a person to maintain their reaction time and those patients who are at a risk of falling, they should use a walker. Uh, some uh, some patients uh, feel embarrassed about use of a walker and they try to uh, either use nothing or they use a cane. Canes indeed don't help much because when a person falls, cane is in one hand and the person uh, cannot take a sport against the cane and um, when a person falls, the cane goes with them. Therefore, we always suggest a good uh, walkers and physiotherapy assessment is quite help, uh, helpful in selecting what type of walker a good, a, a, is good for a person. Also, they should be careful about turning uh, because turning is a major issue in Parkinson's disease. When patients are going and they turn, they cannot maintain their balance because of multiple reasons. One, their reaction time is slow, uh, they are turning end block, their base is narrow, their speed is slow, uh, so at turns, they are at especially risk of falls. If they fall and have head injury or any joint pains, they should uh, seek uh, 
medical attention because sometimes there could be uh, injuries in brain or bleeding which could be subtle and patients may ignore uh, and it could become an issue later. Well, you know, you know, doctor, uh, certainly age is a risk factor for falls, of course, with people of all ages, all uh, whether or not they have Parkinsonism. I wonder, has there been any studies done to to show the incidence of hip fractures in Parkinsonism patients? Do they generally occur earlier than the normal population? Uh, hip fractures are uh, quite... Uh, um, uh, they are not uncommon in patients with Parkinson's, especially beyond stage two when patients uh, reach stage three when balance becomes a problem, especially if these patients are frail um, and uh, they are thin. So if they fall, it's quite common we see these patients with hip fractures. Yes, hip fractures, osteoporosis, uh, these are more prevalent in patients with Parkinson's disease as compared to normal population. Okay, what should one do if uh, a fall occurs in a patient with Parkinsonism? We always suggest patients to keep a phone with them or keep an alarm. If they are living alone, they should have a constant contact with someone. Someone should be checking uh, with them time to time uh, so that if they need help, they can, uh, uh, they can call someone. Uh, if they want to wear a whistle, it is also helpful. If a person falls, uh, then they should try to lie down on their back, uh, swing themselves onto their side, and they should use their hands to get into a sitting position and try to crawl slowly towards the nearest object which can hold their weight. And then they should put their hands on the seat of the furniture or a chair and space them apart. Then they should try to uh, bring their best leg up and knee close to a chest and try to push up with their feet to get into a standing position. Okay, uh, have you heard of, uh, I know in the days of digitalization there are lots of devices now that elderly people can can be used to monitor uh, their position. Uh, are you familiar with any devices that are used in Parkinson's patients that can, uh, a person can remotely monitor their, uh, their, per, their family that has Parkinsonism? Yeah. Uh, there are some arm bracelets which have a uh, 911 uh, dial system. Okay. So these patients fall and uh, if they are conscious and they are able to dial, they can push the button and it would connect them with, uh, with either phone or with 911 and they can get uh, help quite quickly. Very good. Okay, doctor, I'd like to thank you for another in a series of uh, hangouts for Parkinsonism. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Sure, thank you very much. Dr. Bennett, you're welcome. See you.